pull a mask. He's wearing that perky suit. <laughs> <laughs> He put uh, he put on Twitter something to the effect of like, uh, cancel culture is ruining humor, and uh, somebody did he the say only... it in Mr. Bean voice though, so it was just like, rrr, 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 rrr. cancel culture is ruining. Oh yeah, humor. he definitely did. And uh, but uh, one of the the only response I I saw from it uh, was somebody responded, uh, "You're Mr. Bean. What are you gonna be canceled for? <laughs> Putting two trouts on instead of shoes?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's always like the softest comedian not that he's soft but it's always like the man who's all like my comedy's me going Ooh. yeah yeah like seinfeld where he's like uh, uh, cancel humor uh, cancel culture's ruining humor anyway what's the deal with toast <laughs> You know, like, and that being maybe, said, maybe Rowan Atkins has these like eight millimeter homemade sketches that are just the darkest, <laughs> sickest fucking things. Horrible Mr. Bean <laughs> fucking snuff porn and shit and weird like Mr. Bean steps on a cat. Yeah, he's just there's a kid around that just always oh seems to be in peril. He doesn't do no. anything. But no. It's 15 minutes of just going. <laughs> This is weird. No, I refuse to believe it. Mr. Bean, the farthest I will allow Mr. Bean to stray into the, into the world, into the the yawning, the gaping maw of of internet monstrosities is what he's already done. If he tries to do anything more monstrous than being like, eh, I think cancel culture, then I'm going to go to sure. London. I'm going to travel sure. to Beanbury, and I'm going to gently... Those now here's the thing about all that. What if, uh, what if Mr. I'll Bean those trout on his feet? What if Mr. Bean went to uh, Spring Hill Jack, started killing people, now leaping from house thing. to house? Here's the thing, Mr. Bean. It has all of the characteristics of a powerful. Uh, I mean, I would say cryptid, but he's on honestly almost fiendish in nature. He seems like an elemental, almost a djinn or something. He's now, spring I saw him, made of mischief. I have seen Mr. Bean do things that would kill a normal man. <laughs> I saw him. He got electrocuted, right, Mr. Bean? He gets electrocuted. Uh, yeah, all the time. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, nothing happens to him. He just starts humming. Like, for some reason, his hands hum after he touches the electric. And it's very strange, and he doesn't know what's happening. And then he touches someone else, and it causes all of her hair to shoot up, <laughs> and her skirt to shoot over her head from static electricity. So he's clearly dealing with extra human physiologies. Do you think no, maybe for sure. Mr. Bean is like some sort of scapegoat for idiocy around him? I think Mr. Bean like is he any anytime someone would stumble, he takes the stumble instead. <laughs> He's like he's almost like some sort of stupidity engine where he, <laughs> yeah. he like draws buffoonery to him. Maybe Mr. Bean. I mean, maybe and and hopefully he just stays unaware of that because if Bean ever became self-aware, my God, he could bungle a city block in seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mr. Bean has bungled all of North London. <laughs> There's just women, <laughs> children crying, dead. Residents. Dead dads everywhere. Residents are advised to steer clear of public eateries, <laughs> swimming pools, a park, uh, where Mr. Bean likes to eat a sandwich and sometimes get caught up in the lettuce. It's just a um, massive wave of people sitting on tacks. <laughs> I do, I do, I do low key love Mr. Bean. I literally watched the entire series not too long ago, I, and we it all is do. fucking genius it's full-on mimery the man doesn't say it well he does say a couple of words but it's like just low-key like you know what he missed and out on and it's hilarious that a few tv people did is mm. that uh mr bean never met bigfoot mr bean never met bigfoot being on bigfoot would have been great yeah bigfoot Although, on honestly, bean whatever I'm, imag <laughs> I'm imagining the the mr bean meeting bigfoot episode as just the entire episode them just missing one another <laughs> <laughs> like honestly if i were to write that episode it would be at the very start mr bean loses his wallet when he's going looking for bigfoot sure bigfoot finds it 
and for the entire episode is trying to return it to Mr. Bean, who's constantly trying to find Bigfoot, and a ra- they're just going around the same tree. You know what I'm talking <laughs> sure, about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pop- yeah, Bean, Bean one has door. to kneel down next to a hot dog cart to tie his shoe <laughs> right exactly. as Bigfoot crosses him. Right. <laughs> exactly. Right as Bigfoot's like, has anybody seen this guy? <laughs> yeah. Um, God, I need that now. Ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> Welcome to Werewolf Radar, the world's premier paranormal preparedness podcast. My name's Jordan Dahl. I'm Nate Baldy. And I am Roger Norquist. And today's episode of Werewolf Radar is brought to you by Monstroco brand Skin by the Foot. Do you need a lot of skin? Do you need it fast? Are you a mummy or perhaps some sort of muscular, weird, skinless uncle that someone's keeping in an attic, like in that movie Hellraiser? <laughs> then buy Monstroco <laughs> brand skin by the foot 100 percent inhuman skin it, it says that for some i mean it looks like <laughs> human skin i feel like that like they say that like it's a like it's a selling point but i feel oh, like see, well i thought you meant that you would after using it be wrapped 100 percent in oh human okay skin. no 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 it's like it's it's like you know how like a wig will say like 100 percent cadaver hair yes yeah this is saying it's <laughs> this is 100 percent not human skin but it definitely looks like it you can't tell the difference honestly my question is if this is not human skin then where's it coming from monstroco don't answer (laughs) please don't answer please please don't answer i wish not i wish not to see the flesh orbs (laughs) but anyway if you need a ton of skin they got it they're selling it on the website you can get it uh by the foot as it says you can't do like half foots and stuff but maybe you and a friend could split a foot if you only need a half foot hell yeah split a foot yeah you want to split a foot three feet together each have a foot get that three foot discount yeah yeah i say we uh, definitely bind ourselves together through three <laughs> feet of flesh sure you could do that absolutely you could slap it over you know an already existing wound you could like 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 uh, oh. I mentioned earlier. See, you're There's using a... it as a band-aid. Me and Nate want to use it as a Siamese triplet maker. If you're some sort of a reverse mummy, maybe, if you're like a mummy who doesn't want to other people to know you're a mummy and you have to go to, pr- like, prom, <laughs> then you're going to want to wrap up in some skin by the foot. And yeah, it's not going to look as good as, like, like regular, like, real skin. Real is... I'm sorry, that's like... You know what I'm saying? It's yes. Not, it, it, it's not gonna look great, but it'll look better than a bunch of old grody bandages. Am I right? You're not wrong there, yeah. Monstroco. Alexis Faulkner doesn't want to dance with those grody ba- bandages, right? I wouldn't. I need that flesh skin. I need that flesh skin. You need that flesh, flesh skin, wrap. listeners. Give me that pseudo human touch. Mm, you could use it for cooking too. Skin anyway. by the foot. Uh, what's up, guys? I just came back from New Mexico, the land of enchantment. We yeah. thought you were this congealing mess on the ground next to us. No, no, uh, no. Okay, so that's something else. Okay, so basically, me and Nate have... You, mm-hmm. We didn't know you are in New Mexico. We, mm-hmm. by the radiator of the radar, had mm-hmm. this glob just kind of congealing, and we assumed you became a vapor. You were that condensing is... yourself. That is me. That was me, I should say. I am afraid of uh, flying and, by extension, car travel. (laughs) I'm afraid of moving outside of the house. So, uh, the bunker, I should say. So, now I've started just uh, employing admittedly rudimentary teleportation technology too right where it, it melts my original form and just rebuilds it reconstitutes it from you know cells in the environment ham stuff <laughs> around yes yeah, yeah. put Favorite it into step. the pod but yeah that was me but now i'm back back again <laughs> in a new form <laughs> not a belly button <laughs> belly buttons are pointless anyway yeah, uh, who what, do you, what do you even plug into them? <laughs> who would Nothing. like to go first? Certainly not USB-C, my doctor tells me. <laughs> uh, I can I can go first, as this is February, and I've got a fairly February yeah, topic of interest. 
Uh, we'll call this one, this segment, You'll Rue the Day. Ooh. This is, uh, this is how this, this begins from Urbo.com. <clears throat> You're out for a walk when you see a strange silhouette in the distance. Framed against the setting sun, it looks like a large cat. As you squint, it takes on a more humanoid shape. Finally, you realize what you're seeing, but it makes no sense. After all, kangaroos aren't native to your state. Whoa! Well, oh, now, shit. I live in Colorado, and I don't actually know the native animals. <laughs> well, one of them it's is not, not kangaroos. It's not? <laughs> all right. I'm learning new stuff every day. That's what this show's about. Thank you God call you in this... <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. You call in the strange sighting to your local police department, and they quickly dismiss you as a raving lunatic. <laughs> they dispatch the kangaroo squad <laughs> with, their, Still... with, their, with their pole-mounted chainsaws and anti-jump nets. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> it's just a net, but you can, it only works when you go the top way down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drop nets. Yeah. Drop nets. Still, you're sure that you saw some out-of-place marsupial hopping in the distance. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. You're now a victim of the phantom kangaroo. <laughs> phantom kangaroo. And you're a victim. Nice. <laughs> it's a good Blue Oyster cult record. <laughs> One of the first notable modern reports came from Patricia Wilcox, a school bus driver in Waukesha, Wisconsin. She was driving down a multi-lane road on April 5th, 1978, when she saw two kangaroos hopping through traffic. Hmm. I thought they were deer at first, she said later, but people were honking and slamming on their brakes, and finally one guy hit one. But Whoa. it just got up and hopped off. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, there's actually reports of people hitting kangaroos and it damaging the car more than the fucking kangaroo, so that checks out. Yeah, those roos are... Uh... D d move, move, tough. Nate, for a second, so rock, people can man. see the toughness that is the kangaroo behind you. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at these things. Yeah, yeah have you ever seen thick. the? Uh, have you ever seen the picture on the internet? Yeah, move the over kangaroo. this. Yeah, look at that. Look at the pecs on that one. Yeah, no, there's a yeah, there's a picture of one of those just like stacking up, just like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean they work out, man. Mm -hmm. Uh, the skid marks were still there. The guy just got out of the car and stood there looking. A week later, Peter Haslick and his wife, Jill, saw a kangaroo hop past their Pewaukee, Wisconsin home. Mm -hmm. It was going pretty quick, Jill said. It was hopping. We knew it had to be a kangaroo. I mean, what else right. hops like that? That size, you know? Yeah. I mean, nothing, man. Uh, Antelope? Perhaps... Antelope perhaps... don't have the, the pure pectoral muscles that a kangaroo a does. guy? Chinese vampires. Chinese hopping Chinese vampires. Chinese hopping vampires, though. Uh, Greg and Janet Napientek were the next Wisconsinites to report a sighting. The couple was driving on a country road when they saw what they thought was a strange-looking deer. We were pretty close, Greg said, within about 30 to 35 yards. It stood up, and I really couldn't believe what I was seeing. Four feet tall, colored like a deer. Janet thought at first it was a deer, until it stood up on its hind legs, then jumped over a ditch and fled. She said it was a kangaroo. Those yep. Are the, those are the 1978 Wisconsin ones. <laughs> I like their those UFO flaps. 1978 yeah, kangaroo Wisconsin flaps. kangaroos. That's right. The same year that uh, the Difed Triangle in Wales was being haunted by strange robot aliens, oh, Wisconsin yes. was getting their roo flap. <laughs> Uh, this is from X Project Magazine. Quote, but what's even harder to imagine is that these out-of-place marsupials appear to possess supernatural abilities as they rummage through the backyards of bewildered people in California, yeah, Illinois, Wisconsin, Tennessee, Minnesota, Oklahoma, Ohio, and Indiana, to name a few. I think they would have just gone on to name every state. But they hit their word count. <laughs> uh, Phantom kangaroos have been spotted in a variety of urban and rural settings and are said to be particularly hostile. They're typically described as three and a half to five and a half feet tall with glowing eyes and ghostly characteristics. Damn. Hell yeah, they're all blind. on steroids yeah. too, just like real kangaroos. 
Well, uh, you might not be far off. They've been blamed for slaughtering numerous dogs, cats, rabbits, birds, and other small animals in areas with high kangaroo activity. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they, they, do kangaroos eat birds? These Dude, deers do? eat birds. Why the fuck not? That's fucking insane. Well, it doesn't say necessarily eating. It just says slaughtering. All right. Well, yeah. These uh, these phantom roos, they oh. might just be, you know, just killing for pleasure. Yeah. Catch, you see how angry they are. They've learned from the humans. Oh no, we're next. But it's also possible that if they are occasionally taking some bites out of bovines or somebody that's been, you know, hit up with like a uh, growth hormone. They, they, you know, they might just be absorbing all the steroid and just getting even tougher and angrier. True. <laughs> true. Yeah, uh, I guess, from, man. <laughs> from 57 to 67, phantom kangaroos haunted Coon Rapids, Minnesota, and were spotted by numerous startled witnesses who dubbed it Big Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> cool, nice. That's definitely what I'm calling kangaroo. I mean, Big Bunnies from now on. Now that's definitely that's some good old fashioned American minimization. Uh, in 1980, a kangaroo was said to haunt San Francisco's Golden Gate Park. Which, you know, uh, I don't remember stories of that. That's Golden awesome. Park, that 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 might have been the Zodiac. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. the kangaroo was the Zodiac the that's, whole yeah, time. That's. What I'm saying. that's uh... No, no one didn't see the Zodiac hopping away. Completely <laughs> That's true. And black they, have not, they have not. Nobody has ever managed to unlink the Zodiac Killer from the Easter Bunny. So we have two suspects here at Warwolf Radar for the Zodiac Killer. Mm -hmm. Kangaroos and Ted Cruz. Mm -hmm. Ted, uh, Ted Ruse. Oh. Ted Ruse. Oh, it's all coming together. Mm-hmm. Uh, evidence of these phantom kangaroos is severely limited. One of the mysterious marsupials was allegedly hit by a car and killed, however, on August 31st, 1981. Both the corpse and the anonymous driver disappeared before they could be investigated. Uh, and in the aforementioned Waukesha uh, situation, somebody did get a fuzzy photograph uh, which shows a slumping figure resembling a kangaroo. Yeah, it kind of looks like a kangaroo. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, I only hear reports of kangaroos. Like, it's not like it was doing something that could have been like a bear, like you have with Bigfoot or the dog man, you know, like, yeah, nah, you got a kangaroo problem. Listen, I mistake things for kangaroos all the time. All the time. And vice versa. Yeah. Every time that I pull both of my pockets out of my pants, mm -hmm. I think, oh shit, a kangaroo. Every time <laughs> I halfway I, I glance a jackrabbit with my gigantification ray. <laughs> Momentary kangaroo. Momentary kangaroo. <laughs> Before I assume it explodes. Yeah, well, obviously, but in that second, I'm like, oh, no! Oh, phew. <laughs> gets close, gets close. Uh, here's from Wikipedia, our finest source of paranormal news. Uh, in 1934, near South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. So you can live both in South of Pittsburgh and Tennessee, which sounds terrible. <laughs> it sounds like a wonderful land of <laughs> awful. Uh, an atypical kangaroo or kangaroo-like beast was reported by several witnesses over a five-day period and to have killed and partially devoured several animals, including ducks, geese, geese a German Shepherd police dog, and other dogs. Yikes. Why are they, police. like, so bloodthirsty? This is <laughs> this is abnormal, right? I mean, oh, I've heard strange. reports of okay. kangaroos just straight up, like, attacking cars and shit. Yeah, me you know? too, I So, guess. like, I think they're like the badger of Australia. Just pissed off. Just fucking yeah. pissed off. <laughs> you can only say it by feeding it watermelons. Sure, sure. Yeah, see, I thought the badger of Australia was that guy named Badger who lives in Australia. Badger! Who lives in the hole in the ground. You know, Badger yeah. McRoy. <laughs> More my badger. He does that whole that's not a knife, this is a knife thing, but he just shows you his sharpened finger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kangaroos are typically unaggressive and vegetarian. A witness described the, the animal as looking like a large kangaroo running and leaping across the field. A search party followed the animal's tracks to a mountainside cave where they stopped. The animal was never found, and national news coverage drew widespread ridicule. 
Rid- it's so funny that it's, it's it's just ridicule. It's it's such a hilarious yeah. reaction that just like seeing a kangaroo makes you a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it's also 1934. There is still yeah. like P.T. Barnum traveling circus uh, shows, which is probably where they came from. I mean, yeah. the fucking the cybernetic enhancements. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, th- those are alien in origin for sure. But That's a different story. But yeah. P.T. Barnum steampunk kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's got a monocle and a top hat, and it shoots a a, a rocket powered <laughs> boxing yeah. glove. It's all. Uh, it's fed. 422 pounds of pistons and cats in you. <laughs> you can tell by the smell of clove cigarettes. This is <laughs> yeah. uh, in 1974 in Chicago, Illinois, two Chicago cops were called to investigate a report that a kangaroo was standing on someone's porch. Two Chicago cubs? Cops. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, yeah, I, thought this, I thought this was cubs. in those lawless pre-police years when the Chicago <laughs> Cubs were responsible for policing for... Chicago. Well, I yeah, thought it was, it was a beautiful was... decade. Honestly, they got it. They made a lot of good moves, those Cubs. And they won the pennant. Yep. Still couldn't get to the series, but uh, couldn't do it. Southside was always bat night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after a brief search, the officers located the animal in an alleyway but were unable to capture it. Over the next month, numerous kangaroo sightings uh, were reported. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe... Sorry, that just washed over me. They located yeah. it in an alleyway yeah, and it got they... away. Yeah. Yes. They they presumably chased it, uh, carrying their uh, deep dish stomachs <laughs> yeah. as they, into a dead-end alleyway where this thing, I'm guessing, leapt left to right up the sides yeah, of the Yeah, it parkoured itself out. And yeah. Yeah. And they and they fell into open sewer manholes, presumably. Yeah. Captains, <laughs> detectives, Doyle and Obingus were, <laughs> were sent to capture the loose kangaroo, <laughs> and oh. instead hilarity ensued. Who knew? Yeah, no, that's exactly what happened at the station. The dispatch <laughs> took the call. Kangaroo. I don't know. Sent Doyle and Bingus. They ain't done shit this send month. Sent Doyle and Obingus. <laughs> Uh, over over the next month, numerous kangaroo sightings were reported in Illinois and the neighboring states of Indiana and Wisconsin, with timing suggesting more than one animal if reports are accurate. <laughs> Good God, can you imagine the newsreel? <laughs> uh, America, siege by hopping menace. Can you imagine the cold check Night Stalker reporter who's just like <laughs> hardcore into this one? There's phantom kangaroos. Why won't anyone listen to me? I know the truth, all right? It's not vampires this time. It's phantom kangaroos. Okay, I was wrong about the vampires. It turned out to be werewolves. Nevertheless. Uh, A kangaroo was seen the next day by a paper boy, the next week in Schiller Woods, Illinois, and the week after that just outside Plano, Illinois. Extra, extra! I saw a kangaroo! (laughs) (laughs) It does seem like that's something you would see in the Paperboy video game. Like a kangaroo just chasing you across the street. A phantom kangaroo! Uh, The Plano, Illinois sighting was reported by a police officer who said it jumped eight feet from a field into the road. Sure. And then 30 minutes later was reported back in Chicago and then reported on the following three days in the surrounding countryside. I mean, it sounds like the bigger problem here is that somebody's developed some sort of kangaroo-emitting illusion gun. (laughs) I think they're using it to uh, stop cops in their tracks while they loot some diamonds or something. I guess. I mean, up up until the 40s, like, kangaroo sounds like the main thing that cops were dealing with. (laughs) This is 1974. Oh, yeah. Okay, well. Might be. That's fair. This is a. Uh, I believe this is Mayor Daly's Chicago, Illinois. Oh, it just feels uh, like these a much kangaroos. More... If these kangaroos was Democrats, they they surely would have gotten the shit kicked out of them. Feels like a much older problem, you know. <laughs> uh, How did this problem even come about? I'm gonna guess. Yes. I got a couple of guesses. Okay. How did the yeah. How did the American phantom kangaroo come about? Uh, rich guys. 
Rich guys That's love a kangaroo. <laughs> rich, rich guys love an exotic pet. They okay. loved, especially like, oh, in the 70s, the exotic pet trade was popping off. They probably were like, we're going to have a big cocaine party, man. Uh, uh, Marty Scorsese's bought a kangaroo. He's going to make Robert De Niro fight it. And then it, <laughs> and then it got loose, you know, and then you, that happens enough. You got a breeding population or, or, or. With the with the forties encounters, you know, circus circus folk did it. Circus folk did it. Circus folk done it. I mean, those are both very valid uh, explanations for how these things came about. Uh, Thank you, Lor- Lauren Coleman. Does weigh in at one point. This is uh, after apparently in seventy eight in Menomony Falls, Wisconsin. There was a, a good photograph taken of a large kangaroo beside the highway. Uh, and Lauren Coleman believed that, uh, oh, also self-described as the leading authority on North American <laughs> kangaroo sightings. Someone's yeah, got to be. Maybe it can be us one day, but right now it's her. <laughs> well, no, Lauren it's Coleman guy. is a guy. He's a famous guy. Yeah. I disagree. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> he's, like the, he's like the main cryptozoology guy in the world. Four years we've been doing this podcast. I, I don't know, man. I'm a, I'm a fan of Matt Moneymaker. <laughs> Fair enough. Also, it's been uh, like seven years. What do I know? <laughs> uh, he suggested the, the animal looks like Bennett's wallaby. Okay. It's also known as the redneck wallaby. <laughs> to the internet. The redneck wallaby, huh? <laughs> yes, uh, the redneck wallaby. Uh, these still don't hang out in America, if so it's still a, weird. If you're a tiny marsupial, but wearing a denim jacket with the sleeves cut off, you might be a redneck wallaby. <laughs> <laughs> you might be a redneck wallaby. Uh, and there is some, if you, the United Kingdom apparently has multiple colonies of redneck wallabies if... that in like long days past... Uh, were you know passed off as see the kangaroo freaks if, if your diet consists mainly of shoots tubers and bush light you might be a redneck wallaby <laughs> uh there is a bit of a a, a bonicula-esque thing uh, there is a a sighting of a, a reported sighting of a Bennett's wallaby filmed by zoologist Maurice Melzac mm-hmm. at Highgate Cemetery oh, in uh-oh. London in 2013, and it was an albino wallaby. What the fuck is going on at Highgate? Highgate is just a fucking a, a portal to to the strange zone. I mean, it being Highgate, I'm going to assume that this albino wallaby is a vampire wallaby. What would it drink? What if it, what do wallabies eat? Shoots, tubers, grasses, well, parts river of water. It's got to be fresh. Cop dogs, honey, ducks, small animals. No, it just kills and maims small animals. No signs of eating. Yeah, I mean that's. I, I guess it would. Well, it would take the blood. <laughs> Leave it him likes alive. the blood. The blood is its favorite part. I think we've established that kangaroos uh, and wallabies, by association, crave seeing blood. They don't need to drink it. They do. They sometimes, just want to. They just want to see it want explode to see out. It. <laughs> they just they like spatchcocking sp- animals. <laughs> they just love to spatchcock an animal. <laughs> oh, come here! I want to kick your guts out. <laughs> not, sh- not sure why evolution's twisted me somewhat <laughs> uh yeah there's a couple more sightings there's a grove city I ohio in 1949 am a brutal uh, killing machine <laughs> <laughs> and i know not why <laughs> I mean, maybe maybe they were transported over to join the rough riders under roosevelt <laughs> you know roosevelt saw them while in australia he's like i could use some of these I boys guess. in my yeah. battalion <laughs> I mean, that's that's what he was looking for for sure i could see him be- bully get me 14 we'll teach them to wear saddles and i'll ride them by god <laughs> and then they showed up and he was like 
Mr. President, you know, he being the president's lead kangaroo breaker. Yeah. <laughs> like they don't want to they don't want to do it. They don't want us to ride them. And he was like, let me at him. I'll give him a, a, a dose of uh, fist one and fist two. Uh, yeah, take the, two this... of these and call me in the never. He's pointing to his fist. I don't know. Uh, the, and the then original... he tried to f- fight the kangaroos. The kangaroo but they all king. Got free. The kangaroo yeah. king, exactly. And honestly, I think maybe because he couldn't defeat them and they kicked his ass, they are now inherently spiritually president of the United States because nobody's defeated them. have been the entire since. time. And they can't be defeated by anything other than a fellow president. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah, why I have to assume that the original plan for the Sierra Club was mm-hmm. to have an all animal SEAL Team Six. <laughs> See? It's all coming together. <laughs> uh but yeah, there are there are up through I think two thousand five is the last multiple sightings in Dodgeville, mm-hmm. Wisconsin, of a large kangaroo. Uh a group tracked the animal to a barn where it was captured in a crate and sent to the Henry Vilas Zoo in Madison. Whoa! Investigation throughout this, so they, they've got one. Whoa! They've got one of the phantoms. They put it in a crate, which is where you put phantoms. <laughs> yep. Whoa! So they, it, and it was just, it was just still a, a kangaroo. Yeah, yeah. They have no idea how it got there. Uh, they Crazy. Just, it, it was bouncing around Dodgeville. Is there... Uh, that it blows says, the my kangaroo mind. Lived, the kangaroo lived out its remaining days at the zoo until its death in 08. Sure. And a statue of the animal now resides in the children's play area. Yeah. Be- here stands the great phantom kangaroo. Nobody... And if you put a curse on a piece of paper and stick it in its uh, little pouch, <laughs> it, it comes to life to... at night yeah. and destroys your enemies. Nobody knew where he came from. But uh, one thing was sure. He loved to kick people's blood out. Uh, This is a statue of him. They say he's dead, but he might still be out there someplace. Good night, kids, at the Children's Museum. Oh, my goodness. What a great segment, Nate. Yeah, that's uh, pretty spooky. It's like... It's... So, like, uh, obviously the easy answer is a feral breeding population of kangaroos. Yes. But, or wallabies. Or, These... or you have a kangaroo king situation where it's just rich people with exotic sure. animals. Yes, 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 yes. Very yes. possible. Yes, Especially out in, possible. like, Wisconsin and Illinois where you can, I believe, still just have zoos in your backyard. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but, like... That wouldn't rule out why they're so elusive or seemingly indestructible sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, they are getting hit by cars and buses and shit. They're getting hit by away. vehicles. They're parkouring away from the cops. It definitely doesn't explain why the fuck they, there was a white kangaroo in Highgate Cemetery. That's insane. That makes me think, it almost makes me think that like, it's like some kind of dimensional slip between the outback and downtown London or something. <laughs> or like, it's there's a, some a, kind of, or maybe, maybe, I mean, kangaroos that's a good scenario. Evolved in such a fashion that they are able to yeah, slip through time and space on particular ley lines. Maybe it's a, a power left them by the dream time. I don't know. All that's uh, good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't lie. I mean, I, I assume if a kangaroo manages to climb into its own pouch, it pops out directly on the other side of the world. Holy shit. We've that makes it. perfect sense. We've done it. That makes too, sense, too much sense to not be true. Call the ghost of Carl Sagan. We've done it. <laughs> Sagan, you rat bastard. We've <laughs> solved your problem. <laughs> Sagan, yeah. You heretical son of a bitch. <laughs> The earth is flat, damn it.